everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at our shift and rotate instructions inside of our ARM assembly language. So this is going to once more be working on the individual bits inside of our register operands, and this is probably one of the last tutorials where we'll be taking a look at those bit manipulations before we get on to the more complex instructions. Well, let's dive right in and see what instructions we're going to be taking a look at. So here is our ARM assembly reference manual, and we're going to be taking a look at these arith arithmetic and logical shifts, as well as these rotates down here. And I'll explain the difference between the arithmetic and logical shifts in a little bit. But let's start out first with our logical shift left. So for all of these instructions, we have the option of using an immediate constant value to specify our shift amount or you can put the shift amount inside of a register it's really up to you but i'm going to be using immediate today let's start out with logical shift left okay so what's going to be happening here is we have a number inside of our register operand which is going to be specified by this right here and we're going to be looking at that in binary and what's going to happen is that the number you specify here by this immediate value is going to be the number of times that all of the bits inside of that register operand are shifted to the left. So if I put a 1 here as the immediate, then all of the bits inside of this register are going to get shifted once to the left, and that result of the shift is going to be stored in our destination register. So let's look at an example in our CPU later and see what that looks like exactly. So I've got my CPU later right here. And let's just throw any value into a register and see what happens. I'm going to do move R0. And let's take a constant value, maybe 40 in decimal. And then we want our logical shift left instruction. I'm just going to make the destination register the same as the operand, just kind of saves me some work. So I'm going to do R0 as the destination, and then another R0, which is our second operand, which is going to be the value 40 that we're going to be shifting, and then we want the shift amount. So I'm just going to say shift by one for this first one. And let's see what that looks like. I'm actually going to copy this a couple times. So we can really get an idea of what is happening right here. Let me just paste this in here. I don't know, that's fine. Okay, so we want to have plenty of shifts so I can give you guys an idea of exactly what is happening here. Let's compile and load. And we're going to be converting this to binary since it's going to be a little bit easier to see what exactly is happening. But let me actually open up our notepad plus plus so we can record the past values of this. Uh, let me see if I can make this. There we go. Here, this should work. Okay, so let's take a look at what's happening to our R0 register as we're shifting left logically. Let's do step over, and first we have our in decimal 40, or in hex 28, put into our R0 register. I'm going to copy that and open up my rapid tables hex to binary calculator, or you can do this by hand if you want some practice, like in our last tutorial, but that would just take me kind of a long time, so I'm just going to cheat right here. And this is our number in binary. Let me make that a little bigger. Okay. And now let's do step over. You see we've got the number 50 after we do one logical shift left. So let's convert that to binary so we can see easier what's happening. And you can see already that we've had all of our bits shifted one to the left. So this one got moved one left, this zero got moved one left, and so on. And on the right hand side, we're just getting padded with zeros. So let's see one more time. 
we do another one, we can do this. And there we go. You, you get the idea that we're just shifting left by one bit every single time we run this instruction. But what is actually happening here is actually very interesting. So let's actually see what this is doing practically. I'm going to change and reset this and let's go over and make this decimal so you can get an idea of what is actually happening. Let's compile and load one more time. So we have our original value of 40 in decimal. But then when I'm doing this logical shift left, keep an eye on this R0 register because you can see every single logical shift left is actually doubling the number inside of that parameter right there. So we started out with 40, then we went to 80, then we went to 160. So every single shift left by one is actually basically like multiplying this value by two. So that's just an interesting quick way to do some math right there. So let's take a look at our next instruction now that you've got logical shift left down. Logical shift right is going to be very similar to this. So I'm going to use the immediate version of this one more time. Let's get it rid of our shift left. Very similar, except the bits are going to be all moved to the right hand side instead of the left hand side. So let's take a look at what this looks like in our CPU later. I think I'm going to use the same number because why not? Logical shift right though. And let's just change all of these over to logical shift right. Looks good. And I'm going to reset my number right here. And let's compile and load. I'm going to show this in hexadecimal. Okay. Resetting everything. Looks good. Let's step over once. So we've got our value 40 in decimal or 28 in hex in our R0 register. But now all of these bits are going to get shifted right by one instead of left. Let's step over. Actually, let's put our first number right here one more time. Uh, yes, I grabbed the right number. Okay. Looks good. Let's step over. We're doing 14 now. And you see, same thing. All the bits are just get, getting shifted right by one every single time we do this. Let's just do one more time to demonstrate a... And there we go. Nothing too complicated right here. It's very straightforward. And if we keep going on the right hand side, you can see the left is just getting padded by zeros as we're going through. So now this brings me to the arithmetic shift right, which is very similar to our logical shift right, except that the left hand oh. sign bit for a signed number is going to be the bit that's getting padded on the left hand side as we're going right. So if this were a negative number and you had a one on the far left hand side, that sign bit would actually stay there and you would have all of these flip, but you would still keep the same sign. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. So here we go. This is our arithmetic shift, right? Same thing. We're going to have our mnemonic here, our destination register, our operand of which register the value inside we're going to be moving the bits within. And then of course, our immediate value of the amount that we're going to be moving these bits by. Okay, let's modify this. And in order to show you that it's keeping the sign bit, I'm going to make this a negative 40. Since if you remember from the last lesson, we're storing the values inside of two's complement notation. So that means it's getting padded on the left hand side with ones to represent the sign bit or the negative number. So let's just make this our oops, arithmetic shift right. Arithmetic shift right. And let's update all of these. And I'm just going to be still shifting by one. 
Oops. There we go. And compile and load. I reset my registers and get rid of our previous values. So let's step over. And remember, we've got Fs on the left hand side to represent all of our ones. Here we go. So that's our initial number. And let's do one arithmetic shift right. And this is our new number. And as you can see, we've had our bits shift right by one, but instead of getting padded on the left hand side with zeros, these are actually getting padded with the sign bit. So since the sign bit was negative or a one to stand for negative, every time we shift right, we're going to get another one that's appearing on the left hand side. Let's do this one more time so you can get an idea. Still shifting, you can see our zeros as di a diagonal right here. And if you notice, these zeros are not getting padded on the left hand side, they're just basically going into the ether, they're nowhere now. So we're just losing them as we keep on shifting our bits. It's just representing that sign bit. Just to give you one example, if I decided to make this logical shift right, then we would get padding on the left hand side here with zeros instead of ones, and then it would actually change the sign of our number. So let's do logical shift right. And just do a couple of these. Not too worried about this. Uh, here we go. This is our initial number again. Let's just reset everything. And then step over. And you can see we're getting zeros on the left hand side. So it's not recognizing that sign bit or respecting it. Here we go, last one. And there you go. Everything's getting shifted, but we're getting zeros on the left hand side. And one last thing I want to show you about the shift instructions is the same way that the logical shift left multiplied the value by two, the logical shift right uh -oh. is actually going to be equivalent to dividing the number by two. So let me just show that real quick. I'm going to change this to a positive 40 and then let's reset our registers and let's take a look at this in decimal signed, compile and load. Step over, we've got the value 40 and we're doing a logical shift right. See, it's cutting the number in half. So it's dividing the number by two every time we do one of these shifts. So that's just an interesting way that you can do some arithmetic there quickly with your registers. Now let's take a look at our last instructions that we're gonna be looking at today, which are our rotate instructions. So if you saw when we were doing these shifts, the bits that were getting shifted weren't accounted for. So they were basically just disappearing and they were completely lost. But if you wanted to actually have them input on the left hand side as we're losing them on the right hand side, you can do that. And it's basically like it's rotating the number around and around. Let's take a look at what that looks like so it makes a little bit more sense. So I'm going to open up my rotate immediate. So this is going to be rotate right. So all of the bits, remember, are getting shifted to the right. But any bit that's getting shifted out is actually going to appear on the left hand side as well. Our mnemonic is going to be roar here for rotate right. And then the same type of thing is going to be our destination register, then our register operand right here, can't click that. And then our immediate value, which is the number we want to rotate all the bits around by. Let's take a look in CPU later. And let's change all of these to roar. Here we go. I'm not sure how many I'll want, so I'll just change all of them. And then let's maybe make this a negative 40 so that we can see all of the bits going around. I think that'll be good. I'm going to change this back to hexadecimal and reset all my registers. And let's compile and load. 
and let's me reset this and do a step over to get our initial instruction. Here are our bits for our first step. Let's do a step over. Here's our new value. And as we thought, we're getting a zero on the left hand side because this rightmost value is actually a zero. So it's just flipping that bit, which is gonna come to the left hand side now and all of the others are getting shifted to the right. Let's do a couple more so we can see what that looks like. And I'll show you when we'll get an actual one when the rightmost value is one. Looks good. One more. Still getting zeros on the left hand side because the right hand side values are zero. And finally, we've got a one incoming on the left hand side because this rightmost value is one. We've been shifting all of the bits until the one comes up on the left hand side. And just one more to give you an example. And there you go. Hopefully you can kind of see the rotation now that's happening with all of the bits. And this is nicely demonstrated for you. So this last instruction is rotate right with extend. I'm not gonna show an example, but just letting you know that it's an option out there is this is doing the same thing as rotate right, but it's actually gonna be using the carry bit inside of the CPSR or current program status register that we talked about earlier on in this series, and it's going to be using that as one of the bits for the shift. So otherwise, it's doing the same thing as this rotate right instruction right here. You might be wondering why we would use all of these different bit manipulations for rotate and shift. And these are actually very commonly used in encryption and decryption routines. But other than that, you're not going to see them used very often. But if, for example, you're reverse engineering malware and it's storing encrypted strings somewhere, it's very helpful to actually look for these rotate or shift instructions to try and see if they're doing some interesting encryption routines. So you can actually search maybe by regular expression if someone's using like a roar with a constant or something like that. And then this might be some interesting code to actually check out. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this tutorial, we took a look at our shift and rotate instructions, and we saw how we could use our logical shifts to shift all the bits inside of a register to the right or to the left by an immediate or constant number. We also saw that this was akin to multiplying or dividing a number by two. And then we took a look at our arithmetic shift instruction, which shifts all of our bits to the right but respects our sign bit on the left hand side so that as we're shifting these bits, it's getting padded with the sign bit and our actual sign of our number doesn't change. We also took a look at our rotate instruction, which instead of just shifting is actually rotating all of the bits around inside of the number. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired everyone and I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, change. I am a little fish with no options. Okay, I got a tiny one. Here we go. Here's one.